I will be reading from Patriarchs and Prophets by Ellen G. White, Chapter 5, Part 4, on page 69. When Satan was thrust out of heaven, he determined to make the earth his kingdom. When he tempted and overcame Adam and Eve, he thought that he had gained possession of this world. Because, said he, they have chosen me as their ruler. He claimed that it was impossible that forgiveness should be granted to the sinner, and therefore the fallen race were his rightful subjects, and the world was his. But God gave his own dear Son, one equal with himself, to bear the penalty of transgression, and thus he provided a way by which they might be restored to his favor and brought back to their Eden home. Christ undertook to redeem man and to rescue the world from the grasp of Satan. The great controversy begun in heaven was to be decided in the very world on the very same field that Satan claimed as his. It was the marvel of all the universe that Christ should humble himself to save fallen man, that he who had passed from star to star, from world to world, superintending all, by his providence supplying the needs of every order of being in his vast creation, that he should consent to leave his glory and take upon himself human nature, was a mystery which the sinless intelligences of other worlds desired to understand. When Christ came to our world in the form of humanity, all were intensely interested in following him as he traversed step by step the blood-stained path from the manger to Calvary. Heaven marked the insult and mockery that he received and knew that it was at Satan's instigation. They marked the work of counter-agencies going forward, Satan constantly pressing darkness, sorrow, and suffering upon the race, and Christ counteracting it. They watched the battle between light and darkness as it waxed stronger. And as Christ in his expiring agony upon the cross cried out, It is finished! John 19.30 A shout of triumph rang through every world and through heaven itself. The great contest that had been so long in progress in this world was now decided, and Christ was conqueror. His death had answered the question whether the Father and the Son had sufficient love for man to exercise self-denial and a spirit of sacrifice. Satan had revealed his true character as a liar and a murderer. It was seen that the very same spirit with which he had ruled the children of men who were under his power, he would have manifested if permitted to control the intelligences of heaven. With one voice, the loyal universe united in extolling the divine administration. If the law could be changed, man might have been saved without the sacrifice of Christ. But the fact that it was necessary for Christ to give his life for the fallen race proves that the law of God will not release the sinner from its claims upon him. It is demonstrated that the wages of sin is death. When Christ died, the destruction of Satan was made certain. But if the law was abolished at the cross, as many claim, then the agony and death of God's dear Son were endured only to give to Satan just what he asked. Then the prince of evil triumphed. His charges against the divine government were sustained. The very fact that Christ bore the penalty of man's transgression is a mighty argument to all created intelligences that the law is changeless that God is righteous, merciful, and self-denying, and that infinite justice and mercy unite in the administration of His government. Thanks for listening.